Senator for Kansas. Mr. President, thank you. I want to talk just a few minutes about uh, the circumstances we now find ourselves in in passing what I consider to be one of the most important pieces of legislation, perhaps the most important piece of legislation that's currently pending, certainly before the United States Senate, and that's what we've been referring to as the PACT Act. It's legislation that we've talked about many times on the Senate floor. It's a piece of legislation that I and Senator Tester introduced. It is a piece of legislation that follows a long line of bills coming from the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee with broad bipartisan support that have consequential outcomes for the veterans of our nation. We started uh, years ago, several years ago, in regard to the Mission Act. We followed that by the John Q. Hannon Act. The Mission Act provided additional opportunities for veterans to access care in settings across the country to bring care from, for medical care to veterans closer to home, to make it more available. Uh, and we followed that with the John Q. Hannon Act, which dealt with mental health and uh, trying to reduce and eliminate the use of suicide in veterans' lives. And then finally, this major piece of legislation that has been a long time coming, way too long, in uh, meeting the needs of those veterans who served now a long time ago in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia, and our veterans who more recently served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And that's the subject of toxic exposure, where veterans come in contact with something that maybe not at the time created any health care concerns for them, but over time has become a significant medical and health care challenge for those who served in those areas. In Iraq and Afghanistan, in relationship to their uh, location of their location in, lo in relation to the location of a burn pit where many things were burned and caused toxic exposure for those veterans in the vicinity. And going back to Vietnam, Agent Orange, uh, which has been so devastating to so many people. Veterans have waited for a long time. The process to date has been so slow. The legislative efforts, while they have occurred, were never sufficient to meet the needs of those who served our nation. And the actions that the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, delayed too long, decisions necessary to make certain that those who encountered these traumatic and dr damaging health care consequences of their service to our nation were not receiving the medical care that they deserved and not uh, being able to acquire the benefits, the financial benefits that come from being disabled as a result of military service. I want to reiterate my support for that piece of legislation. The PACT Act needs to, as it came out of our committee by a unanimous vote, it passed the Senate previously with 84 votes and we need to continue the practice of taking care of our nation's veterans in a way that is not partisan on either side of the issues. I often tell my constituents with some level of pride that I serve on a committee, and unfortunately one of the few remaining committees in which it's difficult sometimes to tell whether there's a Republican chairman or a Democratic chairman. I've been a ranking member, am the ranking member of that committee, and I've been the chairman of that committee. And uh, the senator from uh, Montana and I have worked hard, uh, and in many ways, because it's our veterans, it's a natural occurrence that we find common ground, and our committee members have done the same. Uh, we are now at the point in which we need to make certain that the PACT Act be considered, that uh, cloture be invoked, the difficulties that we've had with whether there needs to be an amendment or amendments needs to be resolved, and this issue needs to pass the United States Senate in short order. Our veterans need to be reassured, and I would do this as to the best of my ability to reassure veterans that for whatever is in my capabilities, I'm going to be the advocate, the spokesperson, uh, the one who is trying to make, along with my colleagues, I'm not trying to single myself out as the only one who cares about this issue, but for what I can do, I'm going to do it to make sure that we have success in this legislation. And success to me is passage by the Senate, passage by the House, and signed by the President, and a law that then can be implemented by the Department of Veterans Affairs. I've said many times there's lots of challenges still to come. No piece of legislation that we pass is easily implemented by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we will have our work to do. But at the moment, the work before us, the work that needs to be accomplished today, now, 
This week is the passage of the PACT Act so that our veterans who are encountering significant medical challenges have the care and benefits that come from being a veteran. I'm one of those who agree with the, the, the thought, the belief that if you serve in our military, we owe you to live up to the promises we made. And I'm of the, of the belief that the costs of war, uh, they certainly come with a service. We then have an obligation not only to fund the military activities, but to fund the programs and benefits that are necessary to care for those who serve, who as a result of their service are damaged mentally, physically, socially, and emotionally. Uh, this is, again, I ask the leaders uh, of the United States Senate and my colleagues here to let's get this resolved, let's get it resolved quickly, and let's make certain that our veterans, as we uh, want to serve them, are served in the way that they should be. And Mr. President, I just would, would only add that time is of the essence. This bill has been pending before the Senate for a while, and before that, the United States House of Representatives, but it's been a conversation by our veteran service organizations, their members. It's been a conversation by veteran organizations across the country now for decades. Solve this problem, and we are on the cusp of doing so, and we should not let this moment pass. There are veterans who are dying every day. There are veterans who are, have died since this legislation was introduced. And I would like to make certain that there is no veteran, even if he or she is nearing that time of the end of their life in which they're worrying about whether their children or their spouse is going to receive the care and treatment, the benefits that they earned by their service. So, Mr. President, please, my colleagues of the United States Senate, please, let's make certain that we do our work to honor their service. I yield the floor, Mr. President.